Very good morning. Hi, this is Dr. G. Shamita from Kakatila University, Varangal. Welcome to the International Society for Computational Biology. I am here to present my research work on sericulture. And my title is Next Generation Sequencing and Population of Indian Tropical Tussar Silkworm Antheria Mylita. This is a wild tussar silkworm. Uh, it exists in 44 ecoreses in, in, in our country, India. It is a tropical silkworm. And uh, uh, we have done some population studies on this. And we, during the studies, we have used the latest technology that is uh, next generation sequencing. And uh, we have found out some interesting results that uh, these ecoreses have been closely related genetically. This is a uh, uh, this is our state producing different types of sil tussar silkworms in various eco pockets, 44 places in our country. The tussar silkworm primarily feeds on Ternalia adra and Ternalia tomatosa. Here is the classification of tussar silkworm. It belongs to Arthropoda class Insecta, and this is the Beautiful tussar silkworm which we read in our university in the Ternalia Arjuna plantation. That is a, a food plant. And this is the moth. And this is the life cycle of tussar silkworm. You can see the egg. The egg has been hatched into the newborn. It undergoes five instars first, second, third, and fifth instars interspersing mutation, like uh, interspersing the mounting. This is the hammer formation spinning, cocoon, pupa, and male and female moths. These two undergo coupling and give rise to the eggs. And from the eggs, again, the life cycle goes on. So I have shown this life cycle because we have done some breeding experiments using male and female moths. We have collected two types of Tassar silicone, that is Andhra local from Mahdevpur, Karimnagar. In our state, Telangana, and Daba Divi from Telangana as well as Jaka. So we have collected from two states, and these are the other places where uh, all the echo races that we have collected have been shown. This is a collection of seed cocoons from the state seed board, the Daba Divi echo race and Andhra local echo race. So these are the parental stocks. So here you can see. These are the cocoons arranged in the form of garlands and from here you can see during the favorable season, monsoon season, the moths emerge out. So from this collection we will identify male and female moths and we will undergo them for coupling. This uh, procedure is also called as graining activity because after coupling it uh, gives rise to eggs. So here we have done the hybridization experiments two diverse varieties that is as I told you, Dava DV and Andhra local echoreses. They are considered for hybridization experiment, that is a breeding program, keeping in view of their genetic and commercial characteristics, such as the adaptability in the same geographical echore uh, regions. So here you can see the coupling, and these are the eggs laid by this procedure. And we have done the breeding experiments by employing back cross method, that is Andhra local and Daba TV of Tassar Silicon, the race during crop seasons, that is the favorable period is between July and August, and we have done the same uh, drainage activity. So here we can see the back cross methodology employed for uh, hybridization. For the preparation of F1 hybrids, we have used Daba TV, that is the donor or female one, and Andhra local recipient or male one. This is aimed at introduction of survivability traits. And the process were made by, you, by releasing male and female moths in the ratio of 2 is to 4 in in-situ conservation model. Then the DFL, that is the disease free laying or eggs of F1, was prepared and incubated in the laboratory. And the F1 progeny were brushed and then reared in ex situ conditions during the first crop season. Then parental stocks were maintained in separate locations to prevent the chances of intermixing with the hybrid ones. The F1 hybrid male, that is Daba TV, cross Andhra local, was again back crossed with the female of Andhra local. 
in order to raise F2 generation. So we have F1 as well as F2 generations right now. Then again, incubation uh, for the DFLs in the laboratory. DFLs are nothing but disease free lanes, and the eggs which are uh, prepared uh, after washing the freshly laid eggs. Then F2 progeny was again breached, and they were also raised in the ex situ conditions during the second crop season. So uh, now we have done the experimentation with hybridization. We have raised parental generation, F1 generation, and F2 generation. So here you can see the production of F1 and F2 hybrids, which I have explained just now. So this method is aimed at introduction of survivability traits of anaerobic ecorys. So these are all field activities. This is the Tassar plantation, which is raised in our university. You can see the agricultural practices for raising the Palmelia Arjuna plantation. Various methods we have employed. We have irrigated. We have done uh, plantation methods by pruning them regularly, by removing the weeds, and by making pits uh, along the plantation. And here you can see the well-grown, fully grown Tasmania plantation with fresh and healthy leaves. We have used these plants for raising our F1 and F2 hybrids as well as parental stocks. Parental stocks were, uh, they were stored in, they were uh, grown in other plants, whereas F1 and F2 hybrids were raised in other plants. They have made the uh, separation of the plants in order to prevent intermixing. So we have used net raising method. Uh, this is the very big net which can cover nearly 10 plants. So this, uh, these uh, nets are used uh, in order to prevent predators from attacking the silkworm. So here you can see the two echoraces, parental echoraces there separately on separate plants. And these are the moths, female, andhra local, female uh, daba TV and other local male moth. This is the procedure of uh, uh, drainage. You can see the coupling, then the hatching of the newly, newly hatched bombs from the eggs. And this is the molting stage, which is uh, removing its uh, external skin by egg dyses. And this is the pupal split, this is the diseased form. And then here you can see the pupa, and these are the cocoons, that is the breed, breeding cocoons. So this is the example of uh, silk worm which is attacked by viral disease. So during the course of uh, this uh, rearing period, we have our uh, silk worms have underwent uh, viral, several viral and bacterial diseases. And this is the coupling and egg laying of Andhra local and Dabba TV, which is the F1 generation. And here these are the disease free laying and here you can see small eggs being hatched and uh, you can see the small insects. And this, this, at this stage, the sitcom is known as ant because it looks like an ant. Then hybrid production F1 and F2, which, uh, which were carried out in our laboratory in situ conditions. Then we have taken the genomic DNA from these moths. And uh, for this, we have used uh, the standard procedure using pris edta solution, and we have uh, uh, collected DNA from these echoraces. Genetic characterization of four populations, that is the parental echoraces, Andhra local, Daba TV, F1 and F2. So we have followed the standard procedure uh, employed by Suzuki in 1964 and modified by Nagaraja et al. Then after the collection of genomic DNA from all these uh, four types of worms, the DNA was sequenced uh, uh, they are independently using the next generation sequencing. That is called, that uh, uh, equipment is called as Illumina Next Sequence 500. This is the standard procedure uh, which was used here. Genomic DNA and quantification and restriction dilution and ligation, then PCR indexing and finally we will get one library. This is the flow chart of uh, our next gen sequencing. And uh, in the library preparation, this is the flow chart by which the Illumina Next Gen Sequence 500 has been adopted. This is the GBS analysis. And this is the result that we got uh, from this uh, various samples, genomic DNA samples of parental as well as hybrid echoraces. So this is the uh, different types of indexing that we got. And the sequencing library for all the samples that we got here. And uh, we, we found that the fragment size was 
between 200 and 700 base pairs. And this is the complete summary of taxa of parental and hybrid ecosystems of Passacico. So number of taxa were 8 and number of sites were 25,877 and so on. So this is the GBS analysis of 8 samples revealed uh, the gametes, number of gametes, gametes missing, uh, proportion of gametes and all these things which is uh, generated by the illumina. And the summary of the alleles of parental and hybrid agoresis. This is again the uh, sequencing analysis showing number of alleles with their proportions and they were identified with the respective nucleotides and amino acids. And uh, this information from eight sequences and statistical data revealed that the sequence eight samples were related taxons. So whatever samples that we have taken, uh, it, it uh, revealed that they are all interrelated. Moreover, the identified single nucleotide polymorphism at the same location were found. And uh, the range was between 4 to 9. The identical sequence, the clustering was, the, was between 4 and 9. The eight sequences have shown unique GC rich regions. So here you can see the GC percentage. It is uh, more than 33. 33 to 36 is a GC rich region. So this is the distribution of GC percentage and GC content that is the gonosine and cytosine concept uh, that is the percentage and these are the DNA sequences as revealed uh, along with the amino acid function and this is the uh, result showing the relationship between the DNA sequences and amino acid function. From this uh, uh, comparative analysis we can see that the amino acid regions were aligned together. So some of the amino acid regions as we can see here, they are aligned together. So this is the observation that we got from this experiment and all these uh, sequences which are GC rich uh, is also found. And uh, uh, most importantly, the GC rich regions were high in S1, S5 and S6 compared to other, the like S2, S3, S4 and S7. We can go back here. We can see the GC rich regions are high in S1, S3 and S4 and also S5 when compared to other regions. So this is the phylogenetic tree that we have obtained by using Megar software. So the phylogenetic uh, tree has shown three clusters. So here you can see the phylogenetic tree and this is one cluster, this is one and that is the other one. So like this we have observed three clusters. So F1 and F2 parents have formed individual clusters that is hybrid hybrid uh, varieties they have formed individual cluster parental echoresis formed individual again another cluster and f1 and f2 population formed one cluster f1 and f1 pop population formed one cluster and f2 parent and f2 population formed one cluster so these are the three clusters that we have obtained and this is the result of the molecular characterization uh, as revealed by uh, this, uh, NGS studies. So this is the inference. Uh, by this uh, study, we can see that Andhra local echo race, which we have taken for hybridization experiment, it is on the verge of ex extinction. So by using hybridization techniques and by seeing how the DNA has introgressed into Andhra local echo race, that the this technique can be utilized to protect the Andhra local echoes from being extinct. So the present investigation on PCR based phylogenetic analysis like uh, it, it, by using parental echoes like Andhra local and DABA and F1 and F2 derived from hybridization by two contrasting characters was successful for two successive commercial crops. That, that means we have done for F1 and F2, two generations only. That is a, that is a limitation of our lab. But when this uh, experiment goes onto the field, nearly 1 to 10 generations can be done and this has to be done by the farmers and it needs a lot of time because this, this experiment itself, it has taken 3 years for us to uh, summarize and take the genetical analysis. So I hope the breeders will take this technology of hybridizing and uh, uh, by using this backrest method, hybridization and by 
uh, by molecular characterization, we can finally assume that the genetic characters can be introgressed into the, the favorable genetic characters or the desirable characters can be introgressed into other echorays and a new echorays can be formed without losing the original characters, without losing the silk fiber characteristics and this can be uh, a, a very successful program in future. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. These are the references. And uh, during this work, I thank my research scholar and uh, postdoctoral fellow, Dr. Virenuka, who has uh, done all these uh, experiments by using next generation sequencing and also uh, our lab and our department of zoology at Tarkia University, who has helped me in a great deal in doing this work. And uh, I also thank the funding agencies, UGC and DBT, who have helped uh, our uh, department and our research lab to carry on this experiment. Thank you.